Welcome to those folks who joined me on my FSX flight starting at Orcas Island Airport way up in the uh, San Juan Islands up by the Canadian border. We, On that flight we flew down to uh, Anacortes, the ferry dock. Big uh, passenger car ferry goes out to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. From there we flew to Skagit Regional Airport, home of the wonderful tulip fields where the tulips are grown through these uh, valley out there. Then we flew to Arlington Municipal, then to Payne Field, home of the Boeing Jumbo Jets, the 747, 67, and 77. Then we flew to Renton Airport, home of the standard body airplanes, the 37 and the 57. And finally, on that flight, we ended up here at Eatonville Swanson Airport in the shadow of Mount Rainier. So we're doing the reverse flight now, this time an X-plane. Here we are in Eatonville. You can see the name painted on the runway, wonderful Orbex scenery, and that's our goal today is to check out some of the scenery, not only by Orbex, but also by Derswicki Design. The uh, airports in Renton and in Payne Field, those are Derswicki airports, and the other ones are Orbex airports, but they're all available through Orbex, and just delightful. Now here we have an advantage in X-Plane, not only are the airports customized, but the whole Washington region is customized. So let's enjoy those views. Here we are in the mountains. Let's get on our airplane and let's get this show started. There's our Skyhawk. Let's climb aboard. Cold and dark. We checked the operator's handbook. We checked the airframe and propeller logbooks. We checked the airworthiness certificate and the radio operator's permit. We know that our weight and balance, we did a weight and balance calculation. We know we're in weight and balance. We have our route and we are ready for some aviation excitement. Let's turn on the master, turn on the beacon, turn the fuel cutoff switch to on, turn the fuel tank lever to both, Verify the parking brake is engaged. Put the mixture to full rich. Put the throttles to one quarter inch. We can get the trim wheel set for takeoff. Check the area around us. No innocent victims in the area. Let's turn on the fuel pump. Oops, wrong one. There's the fuel pump. One, two, three, four. That should be enough. Nice warm day here. Right, left, both, start. Back to both. Throttle up to a thousand RPM. Oil pressure in the green. Oil temperature should be raising slowly here in just a little bit. Full fuel tanks. Exhaust gas temperature not reading yet. Fuel flow is very minimal. Amperage. Uh, is okay, and vacuum, a little more RPM, and the vacuum goes into the green for our vacuum instruments. So back to a thousand RPM, the engine looks good. Let's turn on the nav lights and the taxi light. Turn on the avionics switches. 
Where are the avionic switches? There they are. We have our NAV-1 radio speaker on and the ADF speaker on. I like the marker. Marker beacon is on as well. Directional gyro is not aligned with magnetic north. Well, that's not good. We are at about 50 degrees on the whiskey compass. So let's roll around the heading indicator to 050. There we go. The only direction sensing instrument in the airplane is the whiskey compass, but it's hard to read while maneuvering. So we transfer that number onto our heading indicator, which is a gyroscopically maintained instrument. It doesn't independently tell direction, but it will hold that direction and then we can fly using the uh, using the gyro. Move the attitude indicator wings on the horizon bar. We don't have an altimeter setting yet. But I believe that's set to field altitude from last time, so should it's in the 299, it's in the standard range, but that should be pretty close. We'll get an altimeter setting once we're in the air. We are looking good. Let's get a clearance. Seattle Center, Skyhawk November, 747 Echo Charlie, ready to copy. Oops. Gotta file my flight plan first. Seattle Center, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie, ready to copy. Seattle Center. Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie, ready to copy. We're having a little failure to communicate. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747, Echo Charlie, ready to copy. One thirty four ninety five is our frequency. One thirty four ninety five is our frequency. We should be communicating with Seattle Center. Let's check. Our frequencies 13495. That is correct. Let's swap them just to make sure. Seattle Center, Skyhawk November 747, Echo Charlie. That's not, there's the correct frequency. Seattle Center. Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie, ready to copy. Well, I don't like doing this, but he's not hearing me. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, ready to copy. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie has cleared the Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra has filed. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie has cleared the Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra has filed. Expect departure runway 34. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Skyhawk 6444.
Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is clear to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. We have our clearance. We have our squawk. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is cleared to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Expect departure runway 34. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is clear to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Parking break off. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is cleared to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Expect departure runway 34. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is clear to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is cleared to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Expect departure runway 34. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie is clear to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra is filed. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 6444. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie read that correct. Contact us for IFR release one number one for departure. We'll contact you for IFR release. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Looks like there's a little run-up area here just on the right-hand side of the departure threshold, so we'll pull into the run-up area. I like to be at least at least at a 90 degree angle, if not more. Ah, ah. Well, I'm gonna do a loop around again. I wanna get this right. What I wanna be able to do is to, before I commit to taking the runway, I wanna be able to check for traffic on final. And with the high wing airplane, if you're only 90 degrees turned, the wing blocks that view. So you really wanna be pointing Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, break, break, break. 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 Okay. You want to really want to be pointing out uh, in that direction to check for traffic on final. Let's do a run-up check. Let's go to 1,500 RPM on the throttle. You can see that our temperature, oil temperature is moved into the green zone. We're getting good vacuum. Our oil pressure is in the green zone. We have fuel flow in the green zone. Our exhaust gas temperatures are still fairly low. We're gonna do a magnetos check. Right now we're running on both, which is two spark plugs per cylinder. When I would drop down to the left, that it means it's only one spark plug per cylinder, the left side spark plugs, four cylinder engine, so there's eight spark plugs, and right now we're going to turn half of them off. So we should lose 100 RPM. There you can see a drop down to 1400 RPM. Back to both. Now we're going to turn off the right side spark plugs. Again, turning off four of them. Right side, 100 RPM loss. Back to both. I'm going to turn the landing light on and the strobe lights on and 
let's call for IFR release. Get our throttles back down to 1,000 RPM. No need burning that extra fuel. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie for IFR release, runway tree 4. Seattle Center, Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie request IFR release, runway tree 4. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie, request IFR release, runway tree 4. Well, I don't want to make it a habit of this. Request uh, IFR release. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie request IFR release runway A3 for a kilo to Whiskey 3. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie say again request with departure runway. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie say again request with departure runway. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie say again request with departure runway. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie, request IFR release, runway tree 4. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, say again request with departure runway. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie, runway tree 4, request IFR release. Aircraft calling center say again with your call sign. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie, runway tree 4 for IFR release. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, this is center, go ahead. Seattle Center, Skyhawk, November 747 Echo Charlie, request IFR release, runway tree 4. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, you are released for departure. Runway 34 after takeoff, maintain heading 343 until above 2300, then turn to intercept course. Climb and maintain 5000 feet. Release for departure void of 1806 Zulu, advise with alternate intentions no later than 1811 Zulu, time now is 1759 Zulu. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie released for departure runway A34 after takeoff maintain heading 343 until above 2300 then turn to course climb and maintain 5000 feet release for departure void at 1806 Zulu. Thousand feet.
Seattle Center, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie is with you, 1,500. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, good morning. Radar contact, Altimeter 2992. Altimeter 299 or 2 Skyhawk 7 at Coach Charlie. Let's do a heading. Skyhawk 7 at Coach Charlie, climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Climb and maintain 5,000 feet, Skyhawk 7 at Coach Charlie. Let's do a vertical speed. Let's do a vertical speed hold at 500 feet per minute. Up to 5,000 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet, Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. level off at 3,500, which is a VFR altitude. And I'm going to cancel my IFR clearance. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie Expedite climb to 6,000 feet. Expedite climb to 6,000 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet, Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie Expedite climb to 6,000 feet. Please close our flight plan for Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie at 18.05 Zulu. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie flight time close at 18.05. Thank you Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Okay, we are VMC and VFR for visual flight rules under visual... Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, Charlie climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Oh, she didn't understand that. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie.
post flight plan Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie flight plan closed at... Thank you Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie Expedite climb to 6,000 feet. So she really doesn't get it, does she? Okay. Expedite climb to 6,000 feet Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie requesting the FR flight following from Kilo 2 Whiskey 3 to Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra at 6,000 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie Expedite climb to 6,000 feet. Expedite climb to 6,000 feet Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie continue to maintain the FR separation to call 6444 advise me of any altitude changes and stand by for traffic advisory. Roger. Squawking 6444 Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie request new altitude of 6,000 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie request new altitude of 3,500 feet. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie negative. Your requested altitude is below the minimum for your route. Too bad. I'm gonna go there anyway. <laughs> Renton Mun Information Victor. 1500 Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility 7. Sky conditions 5800 scattered, 18000 scattered, 30000 scattered, 1753 Zulu winds are 19 or 3.7. Visibility 10 miles. Altimeter 2900 overcast. Arriving runway 34. Departing runway 34. Advise on initial contact you have Victor. Brenton Municipal Information Sierra, 1753 Zulu winds are 193 at 6 knots, visibility 10 miles, 
1800 overcast. Temperature 19, dew point 14. Current altimeter is 29901. Arriving and departing runway 16. Rented Tower, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie with Victor to land. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, this is Renton Tower on 124.7, please repeat your request. Renton Tower, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie to land with Victor. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie, good morning. Renton Tower, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie with Victor to land. Skyhawk 7 Echo Charlie Roger. Renton Tower, Skyhawk November 747 Echo Charlie to land. Autopilot off. I think I need to go find the airport. Just not getting much help from air traffic control today, so we'll have to do it without them. One sixteen H is the is the Seattle VOR. Do I have 116.8 in the radio? I do. Okay, so let's get the OBS spun around. Oh, there it is. So Seattle is at 310 degrees, just a little ahead on the left. We're at 330 which would be pretty good. Probably better to be over here at 340. There's the Auburn Airport. There's the Auburn Airport. There's the Emerald Downs horse racing track. Ah, what beautiful scenery. Wonderful. So we're in the Kent Ritten Valley. Rent this Class D airspace. I would certainly be, certainly want to get permission to enter rent airspace if I were here in real life. Compulsory reporting point is what we call the hospital. That would be
So I'm just not going to check in with any other controllers from now on. Seattle Tacoma International is up there in that vicinity. This highway is uh, Washington State Highway 167, often referred to as the Valley Highway. And it will take us right to Renton. IFR, I follow roads. I can see the rented Boeing assembly building from here, almost directly ahead. There's the runway. Let's bring our throttle back, get us into flap range. Without losing too much altitude. Flap range. There's flap one. Bring some power back on. Again, we don't want to foul the plugs. Mr. Wiki design scenery is so wonderful. My old stomping grounds and so many of the real life landmarks are really here. It's just, just a shade less accurate than the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, there's flaps two and there's the runway. And there's flaps three. We're high and fast. Now our speed is good, but we're still a little high. Look at the colorful, look at the colorful murals that are painted on the doors of the Renton factory. depicting the five sevens and three sevens that are built here. One of the iconic features of the Renton Airport is this blast, this jet blast deflector. And we're gonna be coming over this jet blast deflector as we cross the airport threshold, across what's called the fence, the outer perimeter of the airport. And you can see some silhouettes of a Boeing airplane and a, uh, I think there's a biplane uh, and I believe the words welcome to Renton will be written. You can see the the green aircraft are the ones that have yet to receive their first paint. Good speed right on the app the, uh, the, uh, the pappy. Here comes that iconic blast shield, jet blast. Renton, look at that. Look at that, baby.
not spending any time here. I used to live in the uh, yellow apartment buildings just off to our, there's yellow building right there. That used to be in my apartment complex. I love living there. This airport really deserves some uh, extra attention. There you can see inside the Boeing factory. Maybe one day and take a take a flight sim aircraft through that massive building. This is Mercer Island. Downtown Seattle is on our extreme left, and downtown Bellevue is on our extreme right. We have a, an airliner climbing into the atmosphere there, just above our left wingtip. Most likely coming out of SeaTac. There, we use the ILS to approach runway 16 right during our Microsoft flight. We won't have that advantage on this flight because the ILS at Payne Field is only operable in the southbound direction. You could fly what's called a back course. Now a back course uses the same localizer as the ILS for left and right guidance, but it does not give you any glide slope information. So it's certainly not the same as an ILS approach. One ten three is the frequency for that ILS. I believe it's our swap frequency in our nav radio, so let's go ahead and swap it just to, just to get that localizer. Again, the glide slope won't help us, but the localizer will. And you can see we're already receiving it on our number one receiver. That's 2,500 feet, that ought to be good for now. Let's go ahead and hold the altitude. I missed it by a little bit. Put our vertical speed into a 300 foot per minute descent to get us back to that 2500. We can lessen the descent as we approach our target altitude. There's 100 feet per minute. Right there is zero. We'll hit altitude. Okay, should be set. Let's get our heading just a little bit to the right. So we'll make a better track. downtown Seattle. This used this area here on our right used to be a naval air station called Sand Point. 
back in World War II in the 50s. The famous Hiram Chittenden Locks are in this area. This is where the University of Washington uh, District is located. Lake Union and Puget Sound and Elliott Bay. Much better, this particular area, the scenery would be better in Microsoft Flight Simulator than the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Runway here is runway 3-4. So let's turn just a little bit to the left. And get on that heading. Nahomish Co. Information Victor. 1500 Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility 7. Sky conditions 5300 scattered, 17500 scattered. Nahomish County Information Tango. 1753 Zulu winds are 1640 knots. Visibility 10 miles. 1700 over 10. Temperature 19. Dew point Arriving 14. runways 3 4 Current right. Altimeter is 2909 or 2. Left. Arriving and departing, departing runway 16 left. 16 4 right. 16 right. 3 4 left. Advise on initial contact you have Victor. I don't know why we're getting dual ADISs. They're not coming from. Snohomish County Information Tango. 1753 Zulu Windsor 16410 knots. Visibility 10 miles. 1,700 overpass. Temperature 19, dew point 14. Current altimeter is 2909 or 2. Arriving and departing runway 16 left, 16 right. the north end of Lake, Lake Washington, 26 mile long lake. The south end is where Renton Airport is located.
going to disengage the autopilot. Pet power. Get ourselves within flap range. We're four miles out. Hold altitude until we're in flap range. We are right of center line. And again, the, the up and down needle, the vertical needle we can use because that's our localizer needle and we're on the back course. So that needle is fine. The one we can't use is the glide slope. Now the glide slope needle will receive, but remember it's targeted for aircraft approaching from the other direction. So in our direction it's useless. Flaps one, there's flaps two, and there's flaps three. We are high as a kite. Let's do that cross control maneuver we did earlier. Remember that it kind of looks like you might call it like a crabbing motion, where your full rudder, full right rudder, Look at the rudder pedals. To the full right rudder, but yet the ailerons, if you look at the yoke, the ailerons are left. Right rudder and left ailerons, and we're in a crab, and it helps us lose a lot of altitude very quickly without exceeding the flaps speed. You can see we're at good landing speed. We're still just a little bit high though. And then before we get the runway, you want to come out of that cross control condition. Meanwhile, remember those murals at the Renton Airport that we were able to enjoy? You can see some murals here at the Payne Field Airport, which are, uh, which are very nice as well. like a controlled crash. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll, we should never do this in real life. You should maintain a runway, but let's, this scenery is just so wonderful. Let's take a look and really enjoy, really enjoy the depths. This is, this building directly ahead of us is called the delivery center. This is where all the new planes uh, get delivered. It's the only place that paint field with a jet bridge. The two buildings in the near ground are the paint shack. There you can see those murals. This is the largest building in the world in terms of interior volume. And we just flew above it. You would never want to get within uh, 500 feet of the ground, or oh, is it, is it a, what's the rule? 500 feet over the ground, or a thousand feet from a person, something like that. I forget what the exact rule is.
autopilot back on. Let's get the heading cranked around. Put, in, put us on a heading toward Arlington Airport. Heading mode and vertical speed mode, 500 foot per minute climb. Here comes 2,000 feet. We'll wait to 2,500 to get the, uh, actually 2,000's good because we're gonna be descending here pretty quick. We're just now flying over the community of Marysville, Washington. Arlington Airport. You know, we were here just earlier today. I'm going to disengage the autopilot. I kind of forget what the runway orientations are here. get ourselves into flap range.
There's flaps one. There's flaps two. And there's flaps three. We're at landing speed. Just a little bit high. When you're in a big jet, it it's, it makes a little more sense that to control speed, you control speed with throttle, and you control altitude with pitch. But when you're in a little plane, it's just exactly opposite. And it's, it's counterintuitive, but you control speed with pitch. Pitch forward, you go faster. Pitch backward, you go slower. And you control altitude, climbing and descending, with the throttle. So it's just the opposite in a Cessna than it would be in a airliner. Pitch for speed. Pitch to make sure that you're on the landing speed. Right there, there's 55 knots. That's a good landing speed. And then if you're too high, keep, remain your, keep your same pitch, but reduce throttle. And your landing speed will stay the same but you'll descend with reduced throttle, or you'll climb with increased throttle. There's a touch, full throttle, Control with rudder, flaps up. There's a DC-3 parked over there. Again, this is uh, payware scenery. It's all bought and paid for. We might as well enjoy the scenery. Arlington Airport, got a couple of fire trucks out there. Really wonderful. Time to get us over to Anacortes. attention. <laughs> I was watching something else. Let's get our heading around to 031. Oops. Made a big mistake. I hit the uh, directional gyro button instead of the heading indicator. So what I need to do now is fly absolutely straight, line up my directional gyro with the compass as best I can. It's not always easy to do while flying. You should never really try to do any major adjustment while flying, and then move the heading bug over to zero three one or three three one zero rather three one zero, and I will uh, engage heading mode on the autopilot. And let's put ourselves into another climb.
500 foot per minute climb. Six miles 
actually, that's not true. This is a little thump. This is a little thump piece, but it's on the other side of the bigger pit. This is like a pit. Flying right now is the thump. Yes. 
think the action is sort of sealed. And so the answer is 14,000. I got about 12,000. I'm really good that day. And I took my time coming down. It was just much time coming down as I put it together. Let's just say it. This is, what I, this is what I meant by staying left of course. I approached the threshold more square on so we don't have to do any Flaps range, there's flaps one. And as soon as you put in flaps one, you can immediately add thrust or add power as long as you don't ever exceed flaps range. You can stay if you want to keep your speed up a little bit. And in a, in a crowded environment, many times a controller will want you to keep your speed up until very close to the end. Let's go ahead and go to flaps two again.
thanks to one or the other, you'll cut off master switches. And take the keys out. And it's time to go get a hammer. Thanks for joining me today, folks. So I'll take one more quick look outside here at the uh, Orchid Center Forge. Chance to see those Orchids playing, those uh, Orchids playing around out there. Remember this morning we had some Orchids playing around out there. Yeah, this is, a, this is a fun airport. Oh, I forgot to put the flaps up. Thank you.